I think the day of naming is such an important milestone in which to reflect on the journey that has finally reached this point. I mean, I'm enormously proud as a naval officer to be part of this journey and part of this project. It's a reflection of a massive effort by an astonishingly large number of people. In the service, of course, the Navy and the Air Force, but also civil servants, industrialists, ship designers, technologists, all of whom have taken us on this 20-year journey. The flight deck area and the size of the ship provides a real impact on the world stage. It's 65,000 tonnes of British sovereign territory that can deliver a wealth of power to protect the nation's interests around the world. HMS Queen Elizabeth will be the centrepiece of Defence's joint approach to warfare. The air group of Lightning II jets, which will operate from her four-acre deck, will be a mix of Royal Navy and Royal Air Force aircraft and pilots. These fifth-generation jets are Premier League. They are not so much a step change as a revolutionary leap in capability. The ship's company is no bigger than it is on a CVS, but we've got three times the real estate. The automation, the remote sensing, the remote viewing, all of these systems now are designed to make this a much more efficient ship for people to operate in. Technology is more advanced than it was in previous years, so we're able to exploit that technology to make this ship much more effective. The ship does that by lifts, by these automated magazines, by a really clever, highly mechanised weapon handling system for prepping weapons for the aircraft. The ship and the aircraft have been designed with each other in mind from the outset. The automation on the ship will absolutely improve the orchestration required in order to launch and recover these aircraft. And whether it's taking off using the enormous power of that engine and afterburner, or even a short takeoff, which is amazing to watch, it's a fantastic capability. With the convergence of technologies in F-35, the range of sensors, the weaponry, the inbuilt stealth technology and the ability to be able to downlink real-time information to a Queen Elizabeth class carrier or to land-based facilities puts UK defence at the leading edge of technology into the future. It's probably one of the biggest systems integration tasks that the UK have ever seen. Not only is it interconnecting the ship, but the systems then interconnect with a vast degree of systems off board, from satellites to surveillance aircraft and back to joint command centres back in the UK. As well as military flexibility, HMS Queen Elizabeth and her embarked forces provide political and diplomatic choice. In disaster relief operations, she can be placed close in to offer help in rebuilding shattered lives. In times of crisis and tension, she can offer a visible, coercive presence or position out of sight, a flexible means of escalating or de-escalating as the national or international will dictates. These carriers are not just fast jet aircraft carriers. They have the ability to carry large numbers of helicopters, including the Royal Air Force's Chinook. And with those aircraft alongside the Army's Apache, we will have the ability to mount raids far into enemy territory anywhere in the world. The Army Air Corps are very much excited about operating from the new carriers, both in terms of our Lynx Wildcat and also the helicopter I fly, which is the Apache. These carriers will allow us to strike with the Apache further inland with bigger munitions load, uh, greater fuel, bigger reach, uh, and thus we can protect the nation's interests far better. HMS Queen Elizabeth is also serving as a turbocharger for deeper international partnership. Already, Royal Navy and Royal Air Force personnel are being trained in carrier skills in the United States. And our personnel are also serving within the French Carrier Strike Group. It's laying strong foundations with our key strategic partners as we look to share responsibilities in the years which lie ahead. I think there's an absolute paradigm shift in what Defence is able to do with this ship. We've seen what we can do with our current ships, a ship three times the size, with the firepower that we can deploy and the humanitarian support we can offer. It's a legacy for the Royal Navy. She'll have new radars throughout her life, new computer systems. So all of that stuff that makes a ship work will change over time. And of course, if I just project forward to the outer service date, which will be in close to 50 years time and just think that the last CO of this ship hasn't been born yet. It really does show you that it is a once in a generation decision. In this new century, HMS Queen Elizabeth heralds a new era of inter-service and international partnership. And in offering genuine strategic choice in support of our nation's interests around the world, 
she will be the jewel in the crown of UK defence.